what we've got here is a selection of both international operators and investors, and domestic operators. So I'm going to start off by asking, either by a show of hands, that's probably the best way. Um, look, give me a yes or no answer to this question. Um, are internationally branded uh, hotels perceived as better investments by um, investors, lenders, and developers um, rather than national or independent chains? So who says yes that the internationals are better? <laughs> okay, so we've got two here. <laughs> and, 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 and independents? You prefer, you think the independents are better perceived by lenders and developers? Domestic is, domestic is preferred, yes? Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask, so have we got three to one at the moment? <laughs> two. Two, three to two, all right. Now if I ask the audience at the beginning of this, what, what's your view? If I said it's the internationals are better than the domestics, what sort of uh, number of hands am I going to see coming up in the room? So this is, are the domestics, I, I, I'm, I'm, rever I'm reversing this, right? I'm saying, are the domestics perceived as better than the internationals first? So who puts their hands up and thinks the domestics are better than the internationals? Two, three, okay, four. So who thinks the internationals are better than the domestics? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have that problem, yes, I know. But, but at the moment, there seem to be uh, far more hands for the international. Right, okay, so we've got a bit of a discussion. What I'm trying to do is get a feel whether anything these guys say makes a difference to your opinion by the time we finish this. Um, so, what, I mean, let's start off with the obvious thing. What, what are the benefits in your minds, and I'll start with you, Gaurav, what, what are the benefits of uh, an inter international branding compared with a national branding? What's quick summary? Oh, um, I think to, to summarize, at the end of the day, what the owner's most interested in is how we're going to help drive revenue into the hotels. And the brand comes with it. Um, with the brand, obviously, comes a distribution system. And, and it's, at the end of the day, one of the most important factors is what level of business through the brand recognition of the global distribution an international operator can drive into um, the hotel to drive a good return on investment for the owner. I'd also like to add, at least speaking for Accor, for us, yes, we're an international hotel company. Um, we do think international brands add a lot of value, but it's not just that. I think if you want to compete effectively, particularly in the economy and budget hotel market, you really have to have a strong on-ground presence. And it's the combination of the two that actually gives you that edge. It's, it's, it's good to have an international brand, absolutely, but you need to back that up with a strong local infrastructure. And if you look at our history and how we've been operating in Asia uh, Pacific for the last you know 25 odd years, um, we're, we're the leading operator in most of the markets we operate, if you look at Southeast Asia, Australia, pretty much every major market we lead. And that's not just because we're an international hotel company, we've also actually taken, uh, made the effort to invest substantially on on-ground infrastructure. So have a local team that's actually leveraging the global platform, leveraging the global brand. So we're not just resting on the fact that we're an international hotel company, we're actually investing on on-ground resources. So each of these markets, we have in-country teams. We're not controlling this business by remote control out of Singapore. There's a country manager in every single major market in Asia with a strong team that's actually making day-to-day -day decisions. And that, I think, is the combination that actually makes the difference in getting us to where we are and helping us to perform better in our hotels. Okay. So, so there's a view there that you have to have a combination of the two. So you're having a bit of an each way better for how you do it because a lot of groups don't have... No, I understand, I understand yeah. the point, but there are a lot of international groups that don't have that presence. Um, so yes, absolutely. And, and that's why how we actually differentiate ourselves. Okay. So you, you had the international brand, but you also got to back that up with, with strong infrastructure. Okay. Who, who'd like to give the domestic... Uh, all of you, right? <laughs> Kun Supra, do you want to start? Just with your... You know, okay. Talk, talking about about our companies, you know, um, you know, we when we are in Thailand, we are a uh, domestic, we are local, 
you know, but right now, uh, uh, Centra operate in, in nine countries now, you know, so we are a little bit of both, you know, so I, I think that every, every companies, you know, uh, they try to compete. So whatever that international change come from the Western world have, you know, uh, the, the, the local brand or, or the national brand try to have it the same thing. You know, before, if you're talking back about maybe 10 years ago, maybe the, 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 the brand that come from the Western world have a better uh, distribution. But it's not seem to be the case today, you know, when, when the group from a country like Thailand or, or around this area, you know, try to go in international. So they try to build infrastructures. You know, one thing is difference maybe at the brand. You know that uh, the 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 company that come from the Western world have a longer time to develop. Okay, um, I think in the future, you know, uh, 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 that the two is will be the difference between the two is will be less. You know, but one thing that that uh, the local operator have is the local knowledge of of the market, the culture. You know, the um, in in today world, you know, it's a lot of change. You know, and change really fast, or, or especially the the political force. You know, um, it's like it's like Thailand. You know, in, in past couple of years, you know, we always have a, a, a problem with the uh, politicals. You know, and you can see, you know, the the operator in uh, Thai operators react a lot better and faster than the international brand in Thailand. You know, in, in the past couple of years, if you look at the performance. You know all the Thai operators that uh, that have the international next uh, international brand next to it. You know, Thai Thai operator pretty much outperform the international brand. That because of the knowledge of 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 the countries that they have, and they are react faster. So yeah. so there are two things. The, they potentially are two separate things. One is local knowledge, and the second one is flexibility. Uh, you know, immediate response. Yes, to, of course. To things. Yes. Okay, Jeffrey. Anything? You know, we we coming. I, I, obviously, we we sit on the different uh, end of the spectrum from you know kind of the operators over here, and from our standpoint, you know, especially because we're at the economy hotels uh, Asia uh, as opposed to maybe the luxury hotels Asia, uh, I would probably maybe have a different response. But uh, as it relates to economy hotels, our view uh, has been uh, with investments in in seven days uh, in China, in Red Fox and Lemon Tree uh, in India, is that. At, at the you know lower end of the spectrum it, it, for you know budget economy hotels, the brand recognition for many of the guests who'd be staying at these hotels, uh, th there is very little kind of international brand recognition. Many of these people have not traveled across the globe to take advantage of the networks that you know Core and other uh, operators have. And so, our, our view is is uh, and again we're more of an entity level investor. So, being able to invest in these businesses. Uh, which you ultimately can control the brand, build the brand, and what we've seen with you know seven days today with almost you know basically 1,200 hotels, you know that that has you know created tremendous brand recognition for the domestic travelers in the market, and it probably would have been very very difficult to replicate, uh, uh, you know, had we frankly backed an international operator uh, in in that space. You know, different standards, we had more flexibility uh, in, in in the approach uh, with, with with seven days and. Frankly, there is a similar experience uh, in India as well, uh, where we've created uh, the brand recognition uh, that I think, uh, 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 frankly, a lot of the international operators have, have struggled with. That said, again, if we were at the luxury hotels uh, conference, uh, Asia, you know, we have made investments at the at the luxury end, and frankly, it, it has really been uh, on the back of you know international operators, which we think again bring tremendous value. Uh, to those assets, and again, they're they're much more difficult uh, to, to operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, but to be fair, you've chosen two particular markets where it's possible to, to create a domestic brand on a real scale. You know, China in particular, which which probably isn't. Say, if I took Southeast Asia, that's much more difficult to achieve because of the size of the markets. You know, you know, fair fair point in you know whether you have more of a regional uh, play. But again, there are, you know, there's obviously. You know, several, you know, I think very strong domestic operators, you know, already today in, in a market like Indonesia, uh, yeah. others that are now operating in, in, in Thailand and the Philippines uh, and, and Malaysia. So, again, I think <clears throat> certainly on an individual country basis, I think it, it's, it's obviously maybe a little bit more challenging. But again, I think many of those 
local operators probably view it as more of a regional play over time. Obviously, you want to become dominant uh, in, 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 in your respective country first before you really start focusing on uh, the international uh, expansion or the regional expansion. Rob, do you want to add to that? Um, Rob, I'd, um, I'd like to answer that question uh, reflecting on some comments made by my panel, panel members plus uh, also the comment made by my friends here from Apotis. Um, as investors with a domestic brand, I would say with Taj, for the past 15 to 20 years, uh, in our experience, we've always felt that investors have always preferred the domestic brands. Uh, one reason why they prefer domestic brands is because of obviously the know-how. What is know-how? One is also in terms of um, the flexibility that they maintain in terms of uh, the terms that they're willing to negotiate with the investors as well. Thirdly, also because of being on the ground itself. That's very important. And fourthly, it's also important for local investors to touch and feel the product. So for so many years that we've been there, let's say for the past 15, 20 years that we've been there, um, international brands have not yet stepped in uh, at the same pace like you see in China and other Southeast Asian markets. And which is why, I, I mean, I'm sure that's one of the reasons why my friend here, Jeff, also, Robert, Robert Minkus also made an investment with uh, Lemon Tree. Mm. Now, um, also in terms of the comment made by my friend, Soma Podis, that um, in terms of the region itself, we've seen that um, through the investments we made in India, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, we've seen that uh, investors still, till today, are a little careful. But uh, once you see the presence of the brand in the market, such as uh, Gaurav mentioned of uh, Ibis in India, once you see the product there, once people go there, they realize, they realize the uh, advantages of an international brand coming in. Obviously, then uh, it draws about a question in the investor's mind whether it would be in the long term a much better proposition to go with an international brand than with a local brand. But I mean, both, both of them have their own merits. And I feel the international brands are now slowly catching up to the domestic brands. But for the past so many years, I've felt that domestic brands are much more preferred than the international brands. Okay, but you're having a bit of an each way bet now. You're no longer just domestic. Possibly, <laughs> because I'm now stepping into the brand. I'm also, uh, okay. we're also launching our own brand ourselves. And this, is, this has been sort of very general in the nature of those questions, the answers so far, right? So if I, if I now start, uh, you know, honing down into some detailed things like, you know, deliberately uh, difficult questions like, hasn't a domestic brand got more at stake or, or, a, or a smaller brand got more at stake when they take a management contract on than an international brand? An international brand is one of a thousand products. Isn't, isn't that an issue? I mean, doesn't a domestic brand take personal ownership relatively to an international one? Do you want to... Um, in some cases, yes, but I, I, I don't think you can actually generalize that. And I can, I can tell you, we spend an enormous amount of time and effort uh, tailoring our product to meet the local market. So if you go to an EBIS in, in China versus Indonesia versus India, it's still very much positioned in the same uh, segment. The value proposition is the same but you will find subtle differences in the product that go very much to meeting the customer's needs. We, it's, it's not a choice. It is what the market wants. It's what the market needs. And if we want to maintain a strong leadership position and be a strong player in each of these markets, that's what we have to do. And I think um, for sure um, you'll find a lot of international chains doing that. That's just the way um, it is. The, the market requires adaptation of product um, and we spend an enormous amount of time and effort um, doing that and I guess the proof is always in the pudding if we weren't doing that successfully we wouldn't be able to grow at the pace we are we wouldn't be uh, a preferred choice of a lot of uh, investors in each of the domestic markets that you uh, that you operate um, if we weren't giving the customers what they were looking for you know we wouldn't have a business oh, no I I, I, I agree with the point, and I think it was, a, it was going to be another question, which was to do with, you know, the the fact that you can offer a Thai hotel in Thailand as opposed to an international hotel or a Chinese hotel within China or, or whatever it is. I, I wasn't quite driving at that, and I think you know that. I, what I was driving at was 
if you've got thousands of hotels that are being run out, that, that rolled out, it's a different proposition to having just a handful where you have more personal responsibility, where someone can go to the operator's chairman or, or managing director and go, fix this problem. Uh, I'm just saying there's a difference in responsibility sure, potentially. Sure, I understand, but I think um, you've got to take a step back and look broadly at what the bulk of the market wants. Um, and we've done some research, which, which Michael um, presented yesterday. <sighs> we think um, the vast majority of the traveling consumer likes a brand. They, they actually, Asians like international brands. Mm -hmm. That's that's well proven. It's not just in the hotel business, but the Asian consumer likes international brands. It's uh, it's it's a well proven fact. And what the brand brings with it, it it does bring in a market, particularly in Asia, where the budget economy market is still. Um, it's segmenting a lot, but it's still um, largely unbranded, largely disorganized. The surety and the consistency and the promise that the brand brings holds a lot of value. Yeah. And I don't think that's, uh, that, that's a hard uh, fact to deny. Otherwise, again, you, know, you always look at um, the, 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 the proof is in the pudding and, and in the result of what international brands are being able to deliver um, in operating performance. That's what the consumer. We think that's what the consumer wants, and we have we've done a lot of work to to actually prove that up. Okay. Right. Just to um, uh, supplement what Gaurav said, um, uh, I agree that uh, the local domestic brands have a lot to the newer ones that are coming online every every other day have a, have much more to lose when they are launching their brand or their company. Um, I mean, I know of ten different brands and management companies that come online every single day, but they fail because their first or second product is not up to the mark or uh, up to the standard standards of the international brands, which is why, I mean, take an example from our, from our own experience. So we've just launched our brand and we ourselves were on a, a fast growth um, platform to develop properties all across India. But we've realized that until unless we're able to get the first or second property right, and the market has accepted it properly and takes it in par with some of the international brands, you're not going to be accepted. So you'd rather go slow because there's a lot more risk of having one hotel successful and the rest coming, uh, coming along, or rather than the big boys like Accor who have 1,000 hotels and one going wrong. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, from that perspective, I hope I answered the question that you asked. <laughs> okay. no, and, and, and just one thing to add there. Um, I, I, I think from our side, totally agree with you know that that there is more at stake uh, for for some of these you know earlier stage uh, you know domestic uh, brands, and that's really when is has been our approach with you know with Seven Days and with 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 Lemon Tree. Uh, it, it, it's it's obviously establishing it first with owned hotels, which you can control, uh, establishing the brand standard, uh, making sure that you know every, every we we feel very comfortable in the infrastructure of the product, uh, and then. You know, kind of expanding into the managed hotels, which again is is going to allow uh, for greater brand recognition. But at the same time, you wanted to make sure that it's good brand recognition as opposed to you know unfavorable uh, brand recognition. And so I think we've got that right. You, you got to have the balance and be willing to put the capital in first. Uh, kind of put 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 the money where the you know where, where your mouth is. Uh, deliver a good product and then kind of look to expand uh, into managed hotels. You know, w one thing I think that you know uh, Gorov and 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 Accor has done very well is. They have done that, right? They have put their money uh, and, and, and invested a lot of their uh, assets in, in this region, and I think it makes it, frankly, you know, w once you're able to control it and, and, and establish again very strong, um, you know, quality uh, brand recognition, and then look to again expand through you know, more of the asset light model. And I think um, you know they're, they're, they've, they've done a very good job. And I think on the domestic side, you know, we, we've made sure to do that because to try to go straight into managed hotels, uh, I, you know, is is, is is incredibly difficult and, and in, in most cases I think a recipe for uh, uh, <laughs> probably you know real problems. Okay, I'll move on to a slightly uh, different subject but one that came up a few years ago was that there was an expectation that the ability to market properties through the internet would create a great leveling of the playing field between international and domestic or, or you know regional brands. Uh, has that occurred or is the emphasis now on, well, the cost of delivery through those different channels, and therefore the internationals are still leading on this? Uh, comment from? Uh, 
I, I can speak from, um, again, from the experience of the investors. Um, I think it depends on which market you're talking about in India. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are in the first year market, a metropolitan market, obviously that drives a lot of the international traffic as well. So that uh, that requires your uh, a far much far-reaching uh, distribution system. Whereas when you're talking about the second or the third tier markets where most of the budget and economy hotels are, that is more um, uh, relevant to the local markets. So this is where I keep saying that that's why domestic markets uh, play a bigger role than international markets because they have a far-reaching distribution system in the local markets and they know the markets well, the, the local market as well as the regional market. So they're able to drive the revenues and sales much, much higher. Then you see some of the international brands, which is also perceived to be uh, in terms of the costs. The cost for running international brand is always perceived to be higher than a domestic brand. And in these regions, obviously, investors prefer to give less and take more. Right. And, and I think that's a, a, a great point. Um, you know, with you know, China is a different animal, and I think we all realize that. But you know, understanding again as the domestic player, understanding uh, the, the the consumer and the traveler. You know, se seven days it was you know took a very different approach uh, to the demand side, and, and and really kind of built the company around their loyalty program. Uh, but in doing so, drives over three quarters of its bookings directly through its own website. So, uh, you know, in today's day and age, that's, that's possible. Uh, obviously, you know, five, ten years ago, uh, you know, it wasn't, in which case, you know, it probably did benefit uh, most to have the, the international brand. But the fact that even in the economy segment, you can drive 70, 75 percent of your total bookings through your own, you know, website and, and mobile booking platform is, is, is really incredible in today's day and age. So, okay. But there's still that different in cost of delivery between the smaller uh, local brands than there is the international, because it was perceived to be a, a complete opening of the, of the market a few years ago. And now the argument, particularly from the internationals, is, oh, well, we can deliver it cheaper because we go through our own websites or we get a cheaper rate on some of the big uh, travel websites. Is that still, the, that's still valid or, you know, is that that's still a, that's still a positive for the internationals from that point of view from from the internet side i mean just just to answer the question i mean again in in china specifically you know uh, seven, 7 days and i think some of the other economy hotel players are able to uh, frankly rely uh, very you know frankly very little on on third party uh, agents uh, okay. like the sea trips of the world and okay. so you know just a handful of, you know, probably a couple percent or less actually are derived from those third party okay. uh, agencies. So they, they are expensive and they're probably more expensive for domestic oh. players than they would be for international who can obviously bundle some other uh, regions or, or brands into that uh, and, and get a better deal. Uh, but fortunately uh, for, for, for the business where, again, you can drive most of your business through your own website, your own mobile booking uh, system, your own call center. Uh, you, you don't you don't really have to rely as much on uh, the expensive kind of third party uh, agents, which again for domestic players would be would be more expensive. I think that's right. Maybe I can I can add to that. Um, I think um, <clears throat> just following up from what Jeff said, um, I think China is actually quite unique, and the large um, domestic hotel companies like um, Seven Days and Hunting and Home Inn have created an incredible position for themselves in, in dominating that market um, and do very effectively um, get a lot of distribution through their own distribution channels. I think when you step out of China, the landscape is quite different for the reasons you mentioned, Rob, and I would say um, when we look at our networks and where we're distributing through our own um, global distribution channels, some of it between 25 to up to 50, 60 percent of the entire business of the hotel through our own distribution channels. It's it is a powerful proposition, and I'm I, I would say it's unlikely that a lot of domestic hotel companies can do that simply because it's hard to build that scale to invest that sort of money in your distribution channels to be able to get that sort of impact. It's very very expensive to actually build. Um, those distribution channels. It, it takes a lot of time and effort and money. So 
because China is such a large market in itself and the domestic players have actually created a very good position with themselves very quickly, very efficiently over the last few years. Um, it is a slightly different situation to when we look across the rest of Asia Pacific. I mean, it, it's, thank you, I, and I, I understand the point, but it it's, goes beyond that as well into, into total understanding of technology. Um, sometimes that depends on individual skills. I think we've all been to hotel sites where it says, you know, you can book online, and when it comes to the end of the day, you actually have to phone up someone at the hotel and, you know, from some of the smaller ones, and that, and that must be a deterrent in a number of cases uh, from doing business as opposed to a positive. Um, but it, it also goes to things like social media and things like that. Um, I mean, as a domestic group, is there much attention to that pay? Because I imagine that you guys have got people who actually manage that kind of process. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. On the domestic side, w would you have people that, or do you think many domestic groups or smaller groups uh, have people who can manage things like that? Because they can be a great positive or they can be a huge negative if you don't manage it properly. You know, <clears throat> you know again, in, in larger companies like Seven Days, um, you know, the infrastructure is there. Uh, mm -hmm. The ability for you know members and there's over you know 40 million you know registered members in the loyalty program you know they have the ability to post feedback on the website on on any of the hotels they're staying so it's a very you know honest platform and I think like TripAdvisor so many of us go to TripAdvisor to check on any hotel that we're we're staying at I think it's 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 the same thing there too so yeah. they have you know obviously the scale you know over a thousand hotels to be able to um, devote a lot of resources to it. In some of our, you know, again, other investments or smaller, you know, domestic companies, you only have so many resources, and so it it, it does become kind of more challenging to, you know, manage uh, the Facebook, the Twitter, the you know, your own website, and, you know, frankly, just getting your own, you know, website to be comprehensive is, is difficult yeah. enough, uh, yeah. you know, in addition to your own, you know, overall, um, you know, distribution network. Okay. So w one of the things that got raised earlier was cost. I think you raised it particularly. You said, you know. We want to keep as much as they can to themselves, which is fair enough. But the argument that was used yesterday in some of this was to do with the scale of buying of the international brands. How do domestic groups deal with that? Can, can they put more groups together to try and buy stuff? Or, okay, maybe in the, the, the case of seven days, you've got a big enough scale to be able to take advantage of that. But is that a really detrimental thing? Or is it the fact that you just get you know, a cheaper general manager and a, and a few other staff, and you can buy things locally in a more aggressive way. Comments on that? Super. Yeah. See, um, I think that if it's a small hotels, okay, if they have only one or two hotels in the group, I think it would be difficult to negotiate with all the, all the uh, distributor channels. You know, um, but you know, um, to be part of the the, the group, you know, of, of of course, you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a plus on that side. You know, when 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 we look at the uh, uh, companies, you know, we, right now we are about fifty hotels, and we don't have problems negotiating with anyone. You know, on the on the online side, we get one of the lowest fee. Okay, and uh, and. Um, I, I, on this side, I don't see any okay. problem for us. I wasn't thinking about just online. I'm thinking about just buying everything, whether it's whether it's laundry, you know, all cost of all goods, uh, or even you know HR systems, which can be rolled out in a very big way. For example, an international group, which you actually have to develop as an, as a domestic group indiv individually, you know, within those groups, and it costs therefore doesn't that cost more money? That's of course right. You when you buy more, you get a better price, you know. But I think this question, I think you should ask this guy because actually you know uh, Centara is part of the central group so yeah. when we buy yeah, things you it's, it's you know one of the <laughs> cheapest in Thailand you know because we have about 300,000 supplier on the list you know so 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 maybe, maybe. Um, what I can say is um, from, I mean the question that you asked yes in local brands again domestic brands again um, I'd like to answer that question in two parts actually again reflecting to the uh, point about being in a in a tier one city or a two, tier two city or a tier three city again. From a, a tier one city, you see the investors are willing to put in uh, more money. F uh, I mean, the cost that the international brands bring with them, the investors are now willing to put in that cost, even though it's incremental and and not cut corners. I would like, I mean, bluntly put it. 
whereas uh, certainly you have uh, the new emerging domestic brands as well as uh, new management companies that are willing to work with uh, investors to get in the get, to get into the property but are willing to take a haircut when it comes to costs as well as uh, recruitments and other other uh, such costs that are attributed to sales and marketing and so on and so forth they are willing to uh, bend backwards a little bit but uh, i mean definitely the domestic brands also realizing that there's so much competition of the new brands coming in that's also international brands coming in they also have to be a little careful but the management companies and the brands need to think from two aspects one is their entry into the market second is with regard to the competition with the new brands that's coming in mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so I do uh, I do uh, agree with your point that uh, you you do have a you I mean you do have a conflict sometimes of local brands possibly trying to uh, uh, possibly trying to cut corners in some ways, but still they will try to make sure that they are at least working towards being in par with some of the international brands as well. You know, the, the, just the one other point on it is and pr probably one of the main reasons why I think so many people are in the room is the economics, whether it's an internationally flagged hotel or a domestic uh, in the economy hotel space, the economics are very good. Uh, you know, the margins, the profitability is, is, is frankly, you know, probably better than, than the higher end of the spectrum. And so th that's why, especially obviously, we're, we've been very focused on the space and markets, especially in emerging markets like China and India and, you know, Southeast Asia. And so, you know, it's, it's, the, the, the reality is, I'm, I'm sure if we looked at the P&L of some of our hotels and, and, and some of, you know, Gorov's hotels, I think, I think they're, they're going to be similar and maybe if one's maybe getting higher rate, you know, maybe we're, we have lower expenses and then one of our hotels may have actually higher expenses uh, than theirs and, and maybe a higher, a higher rate, uh, depending on obviously location and everything. But the, the fundamental aspect of, of economy hotels is that it's a very attractive business model, you know, and, and one of the biggest concerns I think in the, in the region as a whole is 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 potentially around labor and and and, and the increasing cost of labor, which is going to put pressure on the fact that it's very difficult to to raise rates, uh, you know, across, across the board. And so, you know, the the, the benefit of um, you know not having too many people <laughs> uh, in in most of these hotels. I mean, the staff to room ratio uh, for I, I know from you know the majority of the Chinese the, the the Chinese budget hotel players is probably less than you know twenty per per hundred room hotel. And so. You know that that gives you, uh, frankly, much more staying power in the event that the economy slows down, uh, and and again helps you if you are able to push rate. Uh, there's great operating leverage uh, to to drive a lot to the bottom line. I want to ask other because we're in the last yeah. five minutes or so. Yeah. Are there some questions from the floor? Uh, I'd actually like to make a uh, statement on the last point on uh, costs. I think if you're a hard negotiator, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, I've been doing it. And the thing is that if you're an international chain and you're getting uh, uh, specific prices, does it really get passed on to the developer uh, in reducing the cost of the product itself? Generally, it's a square off. The fees of uh, large chains compensates and you end up with the same thing. So it's easier to hard negotiate it doesn't matter you're building one or you're building 10. The world is a marketplace today. And uh, if you fight for it, you'll get your price. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Is, is there anybody else out there who wants to? Any other question? OK. So, all right, Bill. Uh, maybe a question for Accor. Uh, do you see the brandscape for white labels growing? I know with your uh, with your M Gallery branding going forward, do you see that as a great opportunity for the group? Um, <clears throat> yeah, we see that as a as a fairly interesting opportunity, Bill. Yes, um, we are looking at that um, quite carefully. Um, when you say white label, actually, for for us, um, the whole concept behind M Gallery is to actually let the hotel have its unique branding so the hotel does have a name but m gallery is it's <clears throat> it is very much a brand um, uh, it is visible across the hotels but the, the concept of the brand is to let the hotel have its own distinct personality with its own name as well so to that extent yes if you call it white label um, within that context yes it, it is it is an increasing opportunity for us 
And um, the M Gallery brand is actually developing quite well across the region now. Anything else? Are there one more question? Yeah. Between uh, international brand and uh, domestic and national brand? Um, gentlemen, you spoke very well from a domestic perspective, particularly for India and China, which have large domestic plays. Can you speak about how a domestic brand um, educates and attracts inbound travellers? Do you want me to answer that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, I can guess what your answer would be. <laughs> inbound travellers, well, any comment about how do, you, how do you source that business? You know, I, I, again, I think it's, um, it's, it's, it's a very good question. And I think it starts by at least having a, 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 you know, a, a meaningful portfolio. I mean, that's, 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 again, how you get some brand recognition, right? And people understand the product. You know, one of the challenges, I think, in, and even you know, some of the markets in Southeast Asia is that, you know, a branded economy hotel is still a relatively new uh, phenomenon. And most of those are, you know, domestic uh, brands. Uh, so it's first educating the consumer on what the product is. And then, and, and that's for, for everyone. And then the second part is then ultimately educating them on why your brand is, is different from, uh, you know, the others. Uh, but it's, it, until you frankly can add more hotels to the platform, it, it's, it's no question. It's a challenge. And I mean, you could spend marketing dollars, you know, until, uh, un, until the cows come home. But the reality is people are going to say, okay, I'm in Jakarta or I'm in Surabaya or, and I'm going to the next city. If you don't have one then in that market, you know, it's, 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 you know, you've, you've spent all this money and maybe you did attract a couple customers, but they can't find, you know, they can't find the brand. So the reality is you have to invest obviously in, 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 in the hotels and, and try to develop at least a network, uh, so that it's worth actually spending the money to, to attract the, uh, you know, the business. That's fine. But, but I think, I mean, this is an international brand asking the question quite deliberately. And that is, if, if I, if I'm coming into the internet and I look at the different sites and I recognize you know, 10 of the brands, and I don't recognize the others because they're domestic. Am I going to choose the international brand just for, for sec safety and security sort of issue? And, and I think that's, I guess, what you're driving at is how do you position a product? I mean, to me, to some extent, as I think people first travel, they may well go to an international brand, and then as they get more sophisticated and understand that some of those domestic offerings are actually different, more interesting, things like that. Again, the, the one point here, um, and the difference, I think, is in, ter in terms of inbound, you know, international travelers, sure, they're going to be more comfortable with an international brand that they've stayed in, you know, elsewhere. But the reality is these domestic brands are largely, you know, targeting the domestic market. So, you know, over, you know, 95% of the travelers for, uh, for a company like Seven Days are going to be domestic. I think many of the uh, Indonesian you know, domestic hotel operators would say that probably you know, 90, 90 to 95 percent of their business is, is, is domestic travelers. So the reality is many of those travelers, especially in the economy hotel space, you know, international you know, flagged hotel doesn't, a lot, again, it doesn't, doesn't carry a lot of weight from a brand recognition standpoint because they probably, in a lot of cases, haven't traveled uh, you know, outside of their respective country and, and stayed at some of those hotels. So uh, I think a key, a key point to make, again, is these domestic hotels are really for, you know, the domestic, you know, travelers and less for, you know, international travelers, at least at this point in time. Maybe I can just quickly follow up on that. With, with respect, I actually disagree a bit uh, because, again, China is a very unique, large domestic market. When you step outside into the rest of Asia, I can assure you we drive a fairly large amount of our traffic in economy hotels as part of the intra-Asia and even uh, international uh, business coming in from Europe. And it's not a small proportion. So, and particularly as intra-Asia travel grows uh, with the advent of low-cost carriers across Southeast Asia and India, um, we're driving a very, very healthy proportion of that through our distribution channel. So again, I think you really need to look at where you are, which market you're in, and what the focus of uh, and where that traffic is coming from, because even the tier two cities in Asia are actually driving a reasonable proportion of intra-Asian traffic. I, I'm going to have okay. to, Robert. I think uh, time is over. Yes, exactly. And, uh, still the dilemma between uh, domestic and international. So I'll leave the, everybody to to judge by themselves. Okay. So thank you, thank you, Robert, yeah. uh, and uh, a big applause for all the panelists.